March 8th, 2020. Second Sunday of Lent. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. When the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord
This is Catholic Daily Reflections for the second Sunday of Lent, Year A. Today's reflection is entitled, Becoming White as Light. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. What a fascinating line above. White as light. How white is something that is white as light? On this, the second week of Lent, we are given the hopeful image of Jesus being transfigured before the eyes of Peter, James, and John. They witness a small glimpse of his eternal glory and radiance as the Son of God and the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. They are stunned in awe, amazed and filled with the greatest joy. Jesus' face shines like the sun and his clothing is so white, so pure, so radiant that they shine as the brightest and most pure light imaginable. Why did this happen? Why did Jesus do this and why did he permit these three apostles to see this glorious event? And to ponder further, why do we reflect upon this scene in the beginning of Lent? Simply put, Lent is a time to examine our lives and to see our sins most clearly. It's a time we are given each year to pause from the confusion of life and to re-examine the road we are on. Looking at our sins can be hard. It can be depressing and can tempt us to depression, hopelessness, and even despair. But the temptation to despair must be overcome. And it's not overcome by ignoring our sin. Rather, it's overcome by turning our eyes to the power and glory of God. The Transfiguration is an event given to these three apostles to give them hope as they prepare to face the suffering and death of Jesus. They are given this glimpse of glory and hope as they prepare to see Jesus embrace their sins and endure the consequences. If we face sin without hope, we are doomed. But if we face sin, our sin, with a remembrance of who Jesus is and what he has done for us, then facing our sin will lead us not into despair but into victory and glory. As the apostles looked on and saw Jesus transfigured, they heard a voice from heaven say, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The Father spoke this of Jesus, and he also desires to speak it of each one of us. We need to see in the transfiguration the end and goal of our lives. We need to know with the deepest conviction that the Father desires to transform us into the whitest light, lifting all sin and bestowing upon us the great dignity of being a true son or daughter of Him. Reflect today upon your sin, but do so as you also reflect upon the transfigured and glorious nature of our Divine Lord. He came to bestow this gift of holiness on each one of us. This is our calling. This is our dignity. This is who we must become. And the only way to do so is to allow God to cleanse us of every sin in our lives and to draw us into His glorious life of grace. Let us pray. My transfigured Lord, You shone in radiance before the eyes of your apostles so that they could testify to the beauty of the life to which we are all called. During this Lent, help me to face my sin with courage and confidence in you and in your power to not only forgive, but to also transform. May I die to sin more deeply than ever before 
so as to share more fully in the glory of your divine life. Jesus, I trust in you. <laughs>